Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi is the epic conclusion to the trilogy of run and gun action games for the Super Nintendo. This game doesn't do much to change the formula established by the previous two games in the series, but instead builds upon and refines what had come before, delivering bigger levels, exciting boss fights, and action-packed Mode 7 vehicle segments. Return of the Jedi was the highest grossing film of 1983, and for over 15 years, it was the last Star Wars film ever made, unless you count the two Ewok movies. This final installment sees Luke Skywalker, now a more mature Jedi Knight, as he confronts his villainous father and the Dark Lord that corrupted him. By this point, George Lucas was making money hand over fist from the merchandising, and Return of the Jedi was no exception. There were t-shirts, a comic book, all sorts of action figures, and of course, an arcade video game from Atari. Atari's game features an isometric perspective and does a good job of allowing the player to enjoy riding speeders on Endor, fighting TIE fighters in space, or blowing up the second Death Star. It's also extremely difficult, and if you were hoping to do anything on Tatooine or cross sabers with Vader, this game doesn't have it. For that, players would just have to wait 10 years for Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. After the success of the first two Super Star Wars games, the third was inevitable. LucasArts started production right away after the completion of Empire, and most of the same team stayed on. Once again, the production was helmed by Kalani Streicher, who had become the go-to guy at LucasArts for Star Wars games. Also returning were artists Harrison Fong and John Knowles. Having the same artists from the previous game gives the series a consistent look. Peter Ward was back again to do the programming, and Paul Webb returned to translate John Williams' original score to the Super Nintendo. The roster of characters was expanded from 3 to 5, adding Ewok Wicket and Princess Leia to the existing cast of Luke, Han, and Chewbacca. Leia has three different costume changes, each with a unique set of moves. You'll have a chance to play as Leia in her bounty hunter disguise, Endor survival gear, and of course, the metal bikini. Chewbacca and Han are nearly identical to their characters from the last game, but Luke has undergone some changes. He can no longer switch to a blaster, it's lightsaber only this time, and he only has five of the eight force powers from the previous game. Although it's a bit sad we can't use the levitation power to fly anymore, you probably won't miss anti-motion or mind control, and only having five powers makes it easier to toggle through them. The Empire Strikes Back is one of the most difficult games on the Super Nintendo, and while I wouldn't call this game easy, it is significantly more forgiving. The levels are massive, but there are tons of checkpoints activated by touching R2-D2. You'll even come back to these checkpoints if you run out of lives and use a continue. The vehicle segments are also generally easier, with the exception of the final escape from the Death Star, which is insanely challenging. The game was fairly successful when it released in North America in June of 1994, and it would arrive in Japan and Europe in 1995. Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine gave it their award for Best Movie to Game Adaptation of the Year. Despite the success, this game marked the end of the series. The next Star Wars movie, The Phantom Menace, wouldn't be released until 1999, and by then almost no games were still being made for the Super Nintendo. In modern times, players and critics still appreciate the way Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi brings the final chapter of the original Star Wars trilogy to life. When IGN released their list of the top 100 Super Nintendo games of all time, they ranked Return of the Jedi at number 26.
Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges retro games are notorious for. It's easy to get lost in the game's large levels, and one false step could lead to instant death. While there are checkpoints and passwords, if you run out of continues, it'll be game over. But what if I told you multiple ways to collect unlimited one-ups so you'll never run out of lives? What if I showed you secret shortcuts that will let you walk through solid walls or fly through the air to hidden goals? And what if I told you the best way to defeat every boss? Even Emperor Palpatine himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Before we start up a new game, we're going to take a look at the options menu. This may be the easiest of the three Super Star Wars games, but it's still very difficult, so if you're having trouble, don't feel bad about switching the difficulty to easy, but we are going to be playing this one on the default Brave setting. By turning the difficulty down to easy, you won't take as much damage from enemies, and you won't have to kill as many in the Mode 7 vehicle segments, but it won't help you jump from platform to platform any better, so the difficulty will still be there regardless of what you choose. Here at the beginning, we see the classic Star Wars opening, featuring the logo that zooms out into the background, and then the text that flies off into space. The developers have used the Mode 7 effect to recreate this for the Super Nintendo, and I would say this is a pretty creative use of it. Obviously, it doesn't look exactly the same as the movie, but for a 16-bit video game, I think it does a great job of capturing the iconic look of this scene. Little does Luke know that the Galactic Empire has secretly begun construction on a new armored space station, even more powerful than the first dreaded Death Star. Once completed, this ultimate weapon will spell certain doom for the small band of rebels struggling to restore freedom to the galaxy. And that's where this game begins. As the text fades off into the background, and the music gets quieter, we pan down and see the new Death Star currently under construction. We also get a look at an Imperial Star Destroyer and a couple TIE Fighters, all using the Mode 7 effect. For Super Nintendo, I'd say it looks pretty good. All three movies in the original trilogy start out with a scene that shows what the bad guys are up to, and this one is no exception. This time Darth Vader has arrived at the Death Star to personally oversee its completion, and to warn the commanding officers there that the Emperor is coming. And from there we leave the Imperials behind and return to Tatooine, where Luke, Leia, and Chewbacca have hatched a plan to rescue Han Solo, still frozen in carbonite. And that brings us to the game's first stage, which is a Mode 7 vehicle segment. We have to control this land speeder and take it 1,024 miles, kilometers, parsecs, I'm not sure what it is, but we need to travel that many units to get to Jabba's palace. The controls here are awkward. Pressing Y makes you jump, and holding down B will make you go faster. For the entire rest of the game, and in all of the other Super Star Wars games, B is always jump, 
so you'll be forgiven if you accidentally press that instead of Y. I actually recommend holding down B so that you go fast the entire time. This will prevent you from pressing B by accident to jump, and it will allow you to jump farther, making it easier to get across the gaps. So while it may seem crazy to go flying through at top speed, it's actually your best bet. Just watch out for the big rocks and you should make it all the way to the first side-scrolling stage, and you'll have the opportunity to choose which hero you want to play as. I recommend that we use Leia here. Luke is probably the best for the stage, but he's bad against the boss, and Chewbacca is probably the best against the boss, but he's not good for the platforming parts of the stage. You'll notice right away as we get started here that there are Minox that will attack you, and they can pick you up and carry you, which could be a problem whenever you're crossing instant death pits. So if you see any of those guys, make sure to take them out with your weapons. You can attack with the Y button, and that will just do a slashing attack. But if you hold down the Y button until Leia is flashing, she'll do a charged attack. Whenever you see one of these pressure plates, it will either drop a heart or a rock whenever you touch it, and it's random which one it drops, so you can just keep touching it over and over again until you get enough hearts to fill up your health. You'll see these pressure plates all over the place, so use them whenever you need them to refill your health. Whenever you see this monster that pops out of the ground and tries to bite you, you can kill it by using your charge attack, and it'll drop an egg. Then you can just walk off the screen to make it respawn, and you can kill it over and over again. Each time you pop open an egg, you'll find a random item, so you can farm those guys for all sorts of random goodies. The fastest way to get through this massive stage is to stay at the top of the map and just make your way all the way across to the upper right corner, that's where you'll find the boss. But if you want to explore the lower parts of the map, you can find a lot of good items, including numerous one-ups, like that one that we just picked up. Whenever you see these rocky pillars that pop out of the ground, they're very easy to kill from the left side. You can just attack them, and when they explode, the rocks will go right over your head. But when you're coming from the right side, it's a little bit more difficult, and you want to jump and then jump again in mid-air to do your spinning double jump attack, that's a good way to approach those pillars from the right side. And when you're jumping from platform to platform here, you may want to do your double jump to kill enemies, so keep that in mind. And if you head all the way down here to the bottom, you can find some more items, but if you drop too far down, you'll die, so be very cautious, and you can hold down the L button to look below you, and make sure there's something to stand on before you drop down. Collecting an R2-D2 creates a checkpoint. If you lose a life and die, you'll return to the last R2-D2 that you touched, even if you use a continue. These plant enemies are probably the most dangerous ones in this entire stage. They can throw ninja stars at you and whip you with their tongue, so you want to stay as far away from those as you can, charge up your weapon, wait until Leia is flashing, and then shoot them with the full powered blast. From here we can work our way to the area that's directly below the starting, and I would consider all of this very optional. You'll find some more health swords and a number of items over here, including a few big hearts which can restore your health, and there's another R2-D2 checkpoint as well, but this stuff is nothing that you actually need. So feel free to grab it if you want it, but you will not really need the additional health to be able to defeat the boss here. If you pick up a thermal detonator, press X to use it before you lose your opportunity to do so. And over here on the far left, we'll find a speed up power, which will make your character move very fast for a short amount of time. Just don't get out of control and end up falling off a ledge. That brings us back to the middle of the map, and there's another one of those pressure plates here. The safest way to use the pressure plate is to touch it and then quickly hold down A, 
If a rock were to fall, you'll block it, and if it's a heart, you'll be safe anyway. Only Leia and Luke are able to block, so if you're using Chewbacca, you'll just need to try to move out of the way of the rocks whenever you use the pressure plate. And we're going to make our way across these platforms, pick up a thermal detonator, and down here we'll find a big heart and another thermal detonator. So we can use those to clear out the enemies, and whenever you pick up this star item, the stars will attack enemies nearby, so they'll protect you for a short time. We also collected another 1-Up. Remember where that 1-Up was, because we're going to be coming back there in a short moment. These large purple ants take a good amount of damage to kill, so the best way to fight them is to charge up your weapon and hit them from afar. They'll make a shower of small hearts whenever they die, but they do constantly respawn, so your best bet is to just run away from those guys. Whenever you see Jawas, Jawas will throw two bombs and then wait for a second, so that'll give you an opportunity to hit them. And if you collect that R2-D2 and then head back over here to the left, we can do a trick to get unlimited 1-ups. So this is where we just collected that other 1-up, and you're going to hold L so you can see this creature that you can stand on. You need to jump from creature to creature down here, which is kind of tricky. You may need to use a double jump, and remember that you can hold down L so that you can see below you. Once you get over here, watch out for the falling stalactites, and after you collect the two one-ups, you can just drop into the pit, and we'll go right back to that upper R2-D2, which is very close to where those one-ups are. It may be tricky to collect those one-ups, but the good news is, there's an easy to collect one up right outside, so it's this one right here. That way, if you do mess up jumping from creature to creature, you won't lose any lives, and each time you do make it to the bonus room, you're going to net two lives. So you can pretty quickly stock up here, although there will be easier ways to get more one ups later. Just get as many one ups as you think you need and whenever we get inside Jabba's sail barge, we'll be able to do a slightly easier 1-up trick. From the R2-D2 that leads to the 1-up trick, you just want to head up and to the right, and that will take you almost to the boss. So we're just jumping from platform to platform here. We're also collecting coins along the way. For every 100 coins you collect, you'll get an extra life, but there are easier ways to get extra lives, so I wouldn't worry too much about coins. Up here at the top, you can grab a speed up, and then head to the right. You'll have to make a few hops, but your enhanced speed will take you all the way over here to this R2-D2, which is right in front of the boss's room. There's also one of those dragons that pops out, so you can spawn those eggs as many times as you want to, if you'd like to have shields or maybe a thermal detonator for the boss. Watch out for those little holes in the sand. There's going to be spikes that pop out there. And of course, there's a pressure plate right in front of the boss so you can restore your health. Now, if you didn't make it all the way over here to the right, there are some more items down below. So before we actually fight the boss, I'll show you a couple more things. If you already made it up this far, I recommend continuing on to the right to the boss but there's a lot of platform jumping to do here, and if you fell down to the bottom, you can pick up a 1-up over on the right side, and then if you head back to the left, you may wonder, how do you get back to the top? Well, you're going to have to hitch a ride on the back of some of those flying creatures. There's an R2-D2 down here, but we don't want to touch that one because we already hit the R2 that's close to the boss, so if we were to die here, at least we'd go back to near where the boss was. These hovering droids can wreak havoc on you, so make sure to kill any of those that you see before you try to jump up higher. You don't want to get knocked off your perch by an enemy. So we're going to continue doing double jumps here to take out any flying enemies that are in our way, and this is going to bring us back up to the ledge where the boss is, It'll just be over here on the right. So follow the coins. We just got an extra life for collecting 100 coins. 
and here's where that pressure plate is so use this opportunity to fill up your health one more time because once we go far enough to the right it's going to trigger the boss battle the door droid itself is not that difficult to fight but there's a bunch of these turrets built into the wall and if you don't remove those first they'll continuously shoot at you while you're trying to fight the boss and they can deal a lot of damage so knock out any turrets that you see and then focus your firepower on the boss we're going to be holding down the y button until leia flashes to do our charge attack and you just want to stay on the opposite side of the screen from the boss it can only reach so far across so it won't be able to hit you if you're far enough away anytime the boss goes into the hole in the wall it's going to emerge from the other hole so you can reposition yourself and get ready to shoot if you just stay far enough away from this boss you should have no problem defeating it but if you die you should absolutely switch to Chewbacca because he is the best against this guy now I highly recommend taking out any enemies that are on the screen before you trigger the boss fight and that includes those turrets in the background and any Minox that are flying in the area those enemies are just going to be an additional complication when you're fighting the boss and it'll be much easier if you get rid of them first with Chewbacca you just want to stay away from this guy and if you see it go into the hole in the wall you can position yourself directly underneath the opposite hole so that you can start shooting it as soon as it comes out most of the time if you hit the boss right as it emerges from the hole it'll go back in and pop out on the other side but if it does come all the way out you need to get out of the way so that you don't get hit by electricity or a slamming attack so if you stay just about this far away from the boss it shouldn't be able to hurt you you do not want to be directly underneath it that's where you'll take the most damage and you're going to be mostly shooting up and at an angle when you're using Chewbacca now we're using the basic gun here if you had some gun upgrades that would make this boss even easier but you'll see even with the basic gun he is no problem for Chewie with the door droid defeated we can finally get inside and that brings us to Jabba's dance hall we can choose from the same three characters but this time I recommend Chewbacca both his spin attack and his guns are going to be very valuable in here right away you're going to notice these large spotlights that drop on you whenever you get too close but those spotlights are attached to these big metal chains and you want to shoot your weapon into the metal chains because it'll often reveal power-ups including your first blaster upgrade which you'll find in the very first chain so make sure you're shooting those chains and grabbing whatever power-ups pop out as you head over to the right you'll come across these trap doors you do not want to stand on those trap doors not even for a second because they can pop open and drop you to your death after you pass the second trap door make sure to turn around and head back to the left a blaster power up will have appeared above that trap door and you should be careful when you collect it I usually jump towards the blaster power up and as soon as it's collected jump again just in case the trap door is open you'll do your double jump and you'll get away once you get the seeker it makes this stage a lot easier you need to kill all of the enemies in each area to move forward sort of like a beat-em-up game and the most dangerous enemies here are the Riyi warriors and you can see there's a couple of them here they usually come carrying rocks and they'll throw those rocks at you and then they can do some Liu Kang kicks or they'll punch and send their green fist energy in your direction as long as you keep them far away they're not too bad but if you get too close they'll grab you and punch you for a bunch of damage so whenever you see those guys keep them at a distance and you should be able to handle them with no problem do whatever you need to do to get away from those guys if you can get to the high ground that often helps but if they get on top of you as Chewbacca you do have your spin move 
So anytime enemies are getting too close, press the A button to spin, and that will deal the massive damage and should help you clear them out of the way. The spin move does have an energy bar, but this energy bar will naturally refill itself whenever you're not using the spin, so as long as you're not draining it down to empty, which will make it take a long time to refill, you should be able to use the spin whenever you need it. These squid face guys are known as Quarrens, and if we kill enough Quarrens over here, we'll be able to get a blaster power up just in time for the boss. Especially if you get killed before the boss and lose all of your blaster upgrades, there was an R2-D2 checkpoint right here. You'll be able to kill a few of these Quarrens, grab a blaster power up, and then you'll find another one whenever you get to the boss. You can also get a big heart by killing Salacious Crumb, so keep that in mind if you need any energy. And this boss is Bib Fortuna. Don't miss the blaster upgrade that appears in the middle of this room. As long as you have the Seeker or better, you should have no problem with this boss. Just don't let him get right on top of you. That's the only way he can deal a ton of damage. If that happens, just jump away. Otherwise, you can just recklessly shoot at this guy. He might teleport here and there, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about avoiding his shots. Just keep shooting him and he'll go down. With Bib Fortuna defeated, we see the iconic scene where Han is thawed from the Carbonite but Jabba is hiding behind a curtain nearby with multiple other characters. Nobody heard anything back there? Great stealth mission there, Leia. Well, in any case, that's going to bring us to Jabba's palace, the dungeons, and we can only choose between Luke and Chewbacca here. I'm going to recommend Luke. His force powers are great in this area, and his lightsaber is the perfect thing to chop through the enemies. There's a speed power up on the far left if you want it, but I recommend just keeping yourself in control for this first part and making your way to the right, sabering your way through any enemies that you see. If you jump and then do a double jump, you'll spin in midair and be able to cut any enemies that you come in contact with. So that's a good way to deal with flying enemies. You can also hold up as you swing your saber to do a more upward type slash. There are lots of these green orbs that restore your force power here in Jabba's palace. So feel free to experiment with a lot of your different abilities. You can press select to toggle between your different force powers and you'll wanna press X to activate whichever one you have on. The freeze power is good to deal with multiple enemies on the screen, and the one you're going to use the most often is heal, which will restore your health for a very reasonable cost. If you stand in front of those prison cells for too long, hands will reach out and grab you for damage, so just keep moving through that section, and you'll come to the first R2-D2 checkpoint. As you drop down here, make sure to grab some power-ups on the right side. You'll find several health swords and some shields. There's conveyor belts working against you down here, as well as fast-moving posts that pop out of the ceiling and guns that shoot you from in front. This is a great spot to use your Vanish force power. Vanish consumes force energy very quickly, but it'll make you invulnerable whenever it's active. Up here you'll encounter some Jawas. The Jawas will throw two bombs at a time, so after they throw two bombs there will be an opening for you to take them out, or you can try to surprise them as soon as they pop on the screen. Do whatever you need to do against the Jawas, and if you head all the way to the left there you'll find some force power, so continue to pick those up and you'll be able to keep using whatever force abilities you need. We're going to head up here where we'll find another R2-D2, and then over on the left side there's an extra life and one of those speed power-ups. So be careful with the speed power-up, you don't want to fall down to a lower level, and there are some platforms here that drop out from beneath you. 
Continue to work your way down and to the right and we'll come across another R2-D2 checkpoint with a big heart in the upper right corner if you need some more help. Continue to make your way down and you'll see a moving platform here suspended over an open pit. If you fall off the platforms here, that is instant death, so be very careful and try to avoid that. For safety, you'll want to jump up and away from that open pit area as soon as possible and just continue to ride these platforms to the top. Watch out for the pushers that will try to knock you off as you climb up. They are quite obnoxious. And when you get up here, if you head over to the left, you'll find a health sword and a few of those stars that'll damage enemies if you get too close. Just keep jumping up here and you'll find another R2-D2 with a heart over on the left side. Over here we're going to encounter a few more of those Quarrens, and now's not a terrible time to try out the Freeze power, which can certainly mess them up. There's a 1-up on the right, and if you walk through the wall, you'll find a hidden room that contains a Thermal Detonator and a Shield power-up. When you get down here, you'll notice that the conveyor belts are working with you, and if you slide, you'll move very fast. So don't miss the big heart there, and make sure you're spinning as you drop down that shaft so that you can damage any enemies you come in contact with. At the bottom here, you'll be suspended above a spiky pit. This time, if you fall into the pit, it's not instant death, but you'll want to avoid doing that anyways because you'll take damage. So you want to head up here and work your way up to the left where you'll find another hidden room. This one contains a force power up, an extra life, and a speed power up. Although you may not see all of those items at the same time, if some of them are missing, try exiting the room and going back in and some of the items should respawn. The third and final hidden room is right here. You just need to walk from this platform through the wall. And inside you'll find a few more good items before you hit the last R2-D2 checkpoint before the boss. The boss here is this fish frog, Bubo, and he's one of the easiest bosses in the game. Just get close to this guy, hold up and rapidly slash at him, and he'll mostly just jump over you and go right into your weapon. He does release smaller enemies and you can hack them up too because they release smaller hearts which will refill your health. If you want to take a shortcut, if you head from the beginning of the stage down to the right and try not to kill these enemies, you want to press up against this wall, turn back to the left, and then wait until you get hit. That'll push you more into the wall, then you can turn to the right and start sliding, and when you get hit again, you'll see that it has pushed you all the way through the wall, and that takes you up to this R2-D2 checkpoint, which is quite a big shortcut. Whether you take the shortcut or you go the normal way, it brings us to this scene where Luke first meets Jabba. Jabba says that there will be no bargain and drops Luke into the Rancor pit, but unlike in the movie, Luke is not alone down there. No, you'll be able to choose from Han or Chewbacca, and I definitely recommend Han. If you don't like Han, Chewbacca is also good here, but Luke is not that great because to defeat the boss here, we want to spend some time upgrading our blaster, and Luke doesn't have a blaster. The first blaster upgrade is on the right side of this bridge, so you want to shoot down through the first bridge, and you'll land on top of another one, and on the right side of that bridge, that's where you'll find the first gun upgrade. Then you want to shoot down through that bridge, the one that had the upgrade on the right side, and when you come down here, be careful of that volcano, and as you shoot up through this bridge, you'll find another blaster upgrade on the left side. So there it is. And that will give you the Seeker, and once you have the Seeker, this stage will be a lot easier. Whenever you see one of those small volcanoes erupting, don't try to jump through the eruption. You'll just get pushed backwards. You need to be patient, wait for it to stop erupting, and then move forward. 
If you need a big heart, you can shoot down through the bridge-like material here and you'll be able to find one. It seems that the volcano is erupting again, so just wait for it to finish and head through to the right. As you move along here, you'll see these large skulls in the background. They can clamp down and damage you, but for the most part they're harmless as long as you don't linger in front of them for too long. As we head over to the right, we'll be able to grab a thermal detonator and then hit another checkpoint. There's a bunch of enemies down below, so you'll want to use that detonator as soon as you drop to the bottom. And also be on the lookout for eggs. Remember, whenever you shoot open an egg, it will drop a random power-up. There's a big heart hidden up above here. Try to jump up and grab it to restore some of your health, and continue to look out for those volcanoes as you move to the left. When you get to this destructible bridge, you'll find another blaster power up on the right side, which will give you the rapid ion cannon, assuming that you haven't died yet. Keep moving to the left here, rapid ion cannoning through the enemies, and avoiding the volcanoes, and when you get to this bridge, you'll find the fourth and final blaster power up, which will give you maximum power, the Plasma Cannon. The Plasma Cannon is going to be great against the boss, and it's not going to be too shabby against the rest of the enemies in this stage. So just keep blasting as you move to the right, shoot the eggs for random powers, and watch out for the volcanic eruptions. Don't try to jump through them, just wait for them to finish erupting and continue along on your way. There's a speed power up over here on the right that will allow us to zip forward, and it's paired with a shield which is nice so that when you're moving quickly, you don't recklessly take damage at the same time. Just keep making your way through here, grabbing any items that you find in eggs, and we're getting close to the end now. There's some round portals that pop open in the background and small frogs emerge from those. Those frogs can be pretty obnoxious, especially if you don't have an upgraded blaster, so look out for them and keep moving to avoid them. We need to be especially careful as we move through this last section, because if you die and respawn at the last R2-D2 checkpoint that we hit, there's not going to be any blaster upgrades in front of you, and the only way to get your blaster upgraded is going to be to backtrack and that's one of the last things that you'll want to do here in the Rancor Pit, so your best bet is to just make it on your first try. I know that's asking a lot, but as long as you have at least one, preferably two blaster power-ups, you're going to be okay here. And as you go through this last corridor, don't miss the big heart and health swords. They'll give you some more energy so that you'll be ready for the final confrontation. As we head over here to the right, the Rancor emerges from the darkness. If you have a fully powered up blaster, this guy is actually pretty easy. Just stay over on the left side and keep shooting. You can try to jump if he spits the fire at you, but you should be able to survive just by shooting at this guy. If you don't have any blaster upgrades, all is not lost. You still want to choose Han and you can try to use your grenades. Press A to throw the grenades and you want to throw them at an up and right angle. You'll still need to shoot at the Rancor to deal some more damage because you can only throw two grenades at once, but those deal a lot of damage and they'll give you a chance against the boss if you don't have any upgrades. For the crime of killing the Rancor, we're to be executed at the Sarlacc Pit. Which brings us here, outside of Jabba's Sail Barge. I definitely recommend Luke for this one. His force powers will be very handy here, and you'll want to set your force power to heal. If you take any damage, don't hesitate to use that heal power. There are a lot of those green force orbs to pick up here, and if you don't use your force powers, whenever you pick them up, it'll be wasted. Watch out for cross traffic as you jump from barge to barge. You don't want to get on any of the fast-moving barges that are headed to the left. We're trying to get to the right, and those ones are going the wrong way. And this is the main barge. You can actually jump onto this angled platform, and you want to try to take out any of the turrets that you see. 
Over here, you'll need to navigate some moving platforms. Be careful of the stationary platforms that you may jump to. Some of them have traps with spikes that pop out. So carefully make your way to the right, and remember also that you can hold L to look down if you need to see farther below. So sometimes those platforms are a little bit farther down than you want them to be, but by holding the L button, you'll be able to see them more clearly. Jump and double jump to use your spin attack against these turrets, and once you get all the way to the right, that was the most difficult part of this stage. You'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint and a couple force orbs, and then you'll be able to ride a platform up to this upper level, and this part's a bit easier. You just need to continue to move to the left, and there's a lot of enemies here. Many of them will keep spawning as you move. So what you want to do is hold left and just keep double jumping so that you'll spin attack through everything. So just spin attack, spin attack, spin attack, and you should take minimal damage as you make your way to the left. Once you get all the way over to the left side, you'll find another platform that you can ride up. And when you get all the way up on the left side, you can do a big double jump all the way to the left where you'll find a bonus barge that has an R2-D2 checkpoint, some force orbs, and just a ton of coins to collect. Once you feel like you've collected enough coins, start working your way back to the right. You're going to find the boss over on the far right of the top side of the barge. You can also find some more coins if you explore in the lower parts of this area. But once you're done, you want to get to the top and make your way across the masts to the right. So look out for any enemies, do some double jumps to get across, and you'll find some more coins up here. So collect any of those that you want, and that will bring us down to the boss, the Mace Monster. This is another fairly easy boss, but you do need to pay attention to what he's doing. You want to stand close to the boss, hold up, and just start sabering this guy. But if you notice that he's spinning his mace, stop sabering and start tapping the jump button. You want to jump and then do a double jump to avoid his mace. You can avoid his mace by doing a single jump, but by doing a double jump, that'll give you a little bit more flexibility. Keep your heal force active, and use it if you take any damage. Just keep slashing at this guy, keep your health high, and try to jump over his mace, and you should have no problem defeating this boss. With that guy defeated, there is a shortcut to get through here by using a technique called the freeze jump. You want to come up here on the right side, put on your freeze power, jump, double jump, and then you're going to press B and X at the same time to execute a freeze jump, and that will boost you up here to the top and take you right to the boss's platform, skipping most of this stage. And once you get up here, you're just going to fight the boss in the same way that you fought him before. You might want to select your heal force by pressing select to toggle through your powers. Remember, you have to have the freeze on to do the freeze jump. But this is one of the easier freeze jumps in the game. You only need to do one freeze jump here. Later on, we'll be able to use the freeze jump to cover a great distance, but we'll have to do multiple jumps, and that'll be a little bit tougher. So now is a good time to practice the freeze jump technique. If you get good at it, it'll certainly come in handy later. That takes us inside the sail barge, and if you want to play as Leia in her metal bikini costume, this is your one and only opportunity to do so. The good news is, she's a great choice for this stage, so you don't have to feel bad about picking her. This Leia controls similarly to the Bounty Hunter Leia that we were playing as before. You can hold down Y to charge up a ranged attack, and if you do a double jump, you'll do a spinning attack in the air. However, instead of blocking when you press the A button, you'll do a spin similar to the one that Chewbacca does, so that's a little bit different. In this area, you do need to be careful when you're jumping and spinning around or shooting your ranged attack because there's pipes in the background 
And if you damage those pipes, hot steam will come out of them and that steam can damage you and it could knock you into a pit. So just watch out for those pipes while you're jumping and spinning around and be cautious of them whenever you're using your ranged attack. As you climb up the platforms in this long vertical shaft, you need to avoid a Gatlin gun at the top and make your way to the right where you'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint. And if you jump on this antenna that sticks off the side, you can reach a bonus room at the top that has two one-ups in it, as well as some big hearts and health sabers. This is a great opportunity to stock up on extra lives. Because the bonus room is so close to the checkpoint, you can easily jump up here, collect the two lives, and then jump off to the right to your death, but that's going to make those one-ups respawn over and over again, and each time you do this, you'll net one life. This is probably the easiest infinite one-up trick in the game, so make sure to take advantage of it. You can hold up to 99 lives in reserve, and with that many extra lives, the Empire doesn't stand a chance. Once you feel like you've collected enough lives, make sure to pick up the health swords and then drop back down to where that R2-D2 was and make your way back across to the left. You may need to drop back down into this shaft and use the platform, but you need to head over here to continue onwards. There's some boxes that you'll see on the ground if you damage those, sometimes they'll open up and drop items, so keep an eye out for them. So just keep jumping and spinning to the left, destroying the boxes for items, but avoiding the pipes in the background. When you get all the way to the left, you'll find another R2-D2 checkpoint, and a big pile of barrels that you can climb up on top of to reach the next moving platforms. This vertical shaft is a difficult one, you want to try to climb it as quickly as possible because you're going to get zapped by electricity if you don't. So just keep jumping and double jumping and try to get off of those platforms as soon as you can. When you get up here, you want to continue working to the right. There really isn't anything to the left. And you can try to destroy some of these last boxes before we get to the boss. Because it's almost time to face Jabba. This R2-D2 is the last checkpoint before the boss, and this is your last chance, Jabba. Free us or die. Well, I guess he's choosing death. Make your way to the right, and as Princess Leia, this boss is pretty easy. All you want to do is keep charging up your weapon until Leia flashes, and then launch a big energy burst at Jabba. He'll continue to launch frogs at you, but your full powered energy beam will take most of them out. It does not take a lot of hits to kill Jabba, and that will finish off Tatooine. In the movie, Luke acts like he has some big master plan to rescue everyone from Jabba, but could it have really been part of the plan for Leia to be chained to Jabba so that she could choke him with the chains? I find that hard to believe. Here in the game, we skip over Luke's last meeting with Yoda and go right to the forest moon of Endor. Unfortunately, as soon as we land in the Endor system, we're spotted by some scout troopers, so we'll have to take them out. For this stage, you can choose between Luke or Leia, and while they're essentially the same, it's just an aesthetic difference, it's a nice touch that the developers added to allow us to pick our favorite hero here. Just like most of the other Mode 7 vehicle segments in this game, we'll need to defeat a certain number of enemies to advance. That number will be more or less depending on which difficulty you're on. Here on the Brave difficulty, we'll need to take out 15 of these guys. There are two ways to deal with these scout troopers. You can either shoot them from far away, so just let them get out in front of you, and then shoot at them with your gun by pressing Y, or you can try to ram them into the side walls. Ramming them into the side walls is faster, but you'll take a bunch of damage doing it. So the recommended way to deal with the scout troopers is whenever you see one appear, fly up on the screen and let it go below you. Once it gets out in front of you, start shooting it with your gun. So take aim and shoot at this guy. 
and if you wait too long, he will start shooting back, and if it takes way too long, he'll charge backwards towards you, and that should give you a chance to finish him off, but he'll also be trying to ram your bike, which would deal you a good bit of damage. So be prepared for that. We'll need to take out only a few more of these guys to move on, and there are a few coins and hearts to pick up while you're flying through here, so watch your health. If you get low, you need to be on the lookout for those big hearts. Those can certainly help you out. Once we defeat the last trooper, it's not going to end immediately, so you'll have another few seconds to pick up extra coins, and you won't need the hearts that will be there, so just take this chance to grab whatever you can, and we'll be moving on to the next stage. As this scene fades out, you may hear the battle cry of the Ewoks, and that's because in the next scene, we're going to be playing as Wicket. We're only going to be able to choose Wicket for two stages, and that's unfortunate because pound for pound, Wicket is one of the best characters in the game. He doesn't have a spin attack when he jumps, but his bow shoots very quickly and does a ton of damage without requiring any upgrades. But that's not all. The arrows will stick to some platforms or background elements, and then you can jump on them and use them as springboard platforms, which is very convenient. If you head all the way over to the right side of this stage, you can find a 1-up. Make sure to grab it quickly before it disappears. The boss of this stage is located directly above this area, but to get there, we're going to need to climb up the trees on the left side and then head over to the right. The green mosquitoes are probably the most obnoxious enemies in this stage. They'll follow you all over the place if you don't take them out quickly, and they can definitely mess up your jumps. So whenever you see those mosquitoes, try to get rid of them. There are a ton of useful items that you can grab over on the far left side. And after you pick up these stars, you want to head over here where we can jump onto this lift and then head back over to the left where we can eliminate a few frogs and we'll find a shield power up, which we can use for a short burst of invincibility as we head back to the right. So once you grab the shields, make your way back over to the right, continue climbing up a little bit higher, and you'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint and a few lifts that'll take you over to the upper right side. A big jump from this lift will take you to an area that's infested with stormtroopers, and this is very close to the boss's bridge. Just keep heading over here to the right, take out any troopers in your way, and get ready to fight the boss. This droid has two main forms of attack. It can either shoot a stream of bullets straight forward, or it can drop bombs downward from the front of its hovercraft. So the best way to fight this thing is to get below it and attack at a 45 degree angle. As long as you're not directly below the front of the hovercraft or right in front of it, you'll be able to shoot it without taking any damage. Once it's defeated, make your way to the right to get the stage clear, but there is a way to skip the boss. Do a big double jump to the right from the top of the bridge, and as soon as you land, start rolling to the right. Take out any stormtroopers in your path and continue to roll, and when you reach the end, you'll get the stage clear message without fighting the boss at all. And that brings us to the second Ewok Village stage. Once again, Wicket is our only choice, and there's a bunch of coins to collect here at the beginning of the stage, but don't try to grab those ones that are off of the aqueduct to the left. You'll likely just fall to your death. Once you get down to the bottom though, there is a 1-up that you can collect, so quickly head over here to the left after taking out these enemies, and make sure to grab it before it disappears. If you keep grabbing that 1-up, even if you die here in the early part of the stage, you won't lose your lives. There are more of those green mosquitoes here in Ewok Village B, so make sure to take those out before you make any dangerous jumps. If you really want more coins, there are some you can grab down here at the bottom, but these logs that you're standing on will sink into the water, and the fish that jump out will try to knock you off. So it's probably not worth it to grab those, and instead you should just try to climb up this tree. 
Once you start shooting into the side of this tree, you can jump on one of the arrow platforms and then just hold down the Y button. You don't have to touch the rest of the controller, just hold down the Y button and you'll bounce all the way to the top of this tree. It's really that simple. From the top of the tree, grab some coins and head over to this treehouse area. And while those mosquito enemies are pretty obnoxious, these frogs might be even more annoying. The frogs are kind of hard to shoot because they're so small, and they continuously spawn from the baskets that you'll find in this area. The good news is you can destroy those frog baskets with your arrows, and sometimes they'll even spawn items as they blow up. So we're going to head over here to the right. There's one of those frog baskets now. No item this time, but you see there's a red flashing arrow, so you want to drop down but hold to the left so that you can fall onto this platform. And here is one of the baskets that you can't destroy. Up here you want to take out this snake from below, and then hit this R2-D2 checkpoint. Once you've hit the checkpoint, you can drop down, and we're going to do a big double jump to the right from this platform, and if you do it correctly, you'll make it to the next area without having to do some of the complicated platforming above. So that's a bit of a shortcut. Down here on the bottom right side, we'll find a big heart, which we definitely needed. And as you climb up here, you want to take out the enemies from below. You can actually shoot your arrows up through the platforms. So shoot your arrows upward at any enemies you see above you, like this big purple ant. If you try to jump up to the next platform while that purple ant is there, it'll almost definitely knock you off, and that's not what you want to happen. So we'll kill the enemies and then move up to the higher platforms. You can also take out the frog baskets this way. So you want to get rid of them. The frogs are very annoying. So just try to run away from those if they're chasing you. They won't be able to bounce up into the higher parts of the trees. We're actually almost to the end of this one now. We just need to climb up a little bit higher. It's a good idea to try to hit the frogs from below when you can because they're kind of hard to hit straight on. So take out the small frogs from below whenever you see them. The bigger frogs are easier to deal with. And here's one of those purple ants. We'll just take some pot shots at it from below and it will explode into a shower of small hearts. So that'll give us a nice little boost to our health as we make our way to the right. We're at the very top now, so we're going to take out this frog basket and then jump over onto this aqueduct, which will carry us down to the boss's area. Once again, don't try to grab the coins that are off to the left of the aqueduct. You'll probably fall and die. So those are kind of a trap, a bit of a trick to make you want to go that way. And whenever you get down here, Watch out for the enemies, take out that purple ant before you jump over to the next platform, then quickly kill the frog basket and make your way to the right. This is where the boss spawns. The boss here is some kind of green dinosaur, and it has two basic attacks. When you're far away from it, it'll open its mouth and charge at you, so just watch for the open mouth and double jump over the boss whenever it charges. Your better bet may be to stay close to the boss and just pepper it with arrows and jump over it when it gets too close. If it breathes fire, you want to get behind the boss and this will be your best opportunity to deal a ton of damage. So just light this guy up whenever it's breathing fire and you should be able to win quite easily. There's a way to skip this boss too. Jump over this purple ant and stand in this position and keep shooting it until it dies. As soon as the ant starts blowing up, you wanna roll to the right, and if you did it correctly, you'll get the stage clear message, and you won't have to fight the green monster at all. Sadly, that's the last time we get to play as our Ewok friend, Wicket. From here on out, most of the side-scrolling stages will see us controlling Luke, although we will get one more opportunity to play as the other three characters, when it's time to blow up the shield generator. This next stage is the Endor Imperial Base, and this is one of the most difficult stages in the game. Here at the beginning, you can actually slide across the swamp at the bottom. If you keep moving, you won't take damage. You may want to put Freeze Force on if you do this, because a bunch of enemies will start following you, and that's a good way to get rid of them all. 
but you're not going to get very far just sliding to the right. You need to climb up the ATAT -AT legs and make your way to the top. As you climb up the platforms, you can make a big jump over here to the right, and you'll find some of these supply rooms. There are several of these between each of the sections here, and if you cut through the doors and enter them, you'll find lots of good stuff. Here in the middle section, if you slide across the bottom, you'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint, and if you head all the way to the right, you'll find a thermal detonator and some coins, but we're going to need to jump onto this platform and continue our journey upwards. There are several ways to get into this middle section, and this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our climbing, but if you want to head through this supply room and into the lower part of the far right section, you can, but you won't be able to climb up to the top from here, at least without using tricks. This is the lower right corner of the map. There's an R2-D2 checkpoint down there, as well as a big heart and a force power up. But once you've collected that stuff, you need to make your way back into the middle section, because that's the only way we're going to be able to get to the top. That far right section is mostly an area that you would fall down into if you made a mistake. So this is the way that we actually want to go. Climb up this platform in the middle section, don't linger on that platform too long because there's a roller that will come down and damage you, and then you want to jump over here, and inside this room you can actually find a force power-up. So make sure to use your heal force if you need it before you collect that, and then you're going to jump over to this platform. The boss is in the upper right corner, but believe it or not, to get there, we need to work our way to the left here. So we jumped on top of this building, we're going to try to avoid that roller and jump onto this moving platform which will carry us over to this one, and from here we're going to jump up to that next platform, and then we want to jump up to a smaller one that will take us even higher up into the air. So this one will take us to an R2-D2 checkpoint, and now we're all the way at the top of the map. Once you made it up here, the rest of the stage is pretty easy. You can collect some coins down here if you want to, but watch out for those doors that will close on you and deal you damage. What you actually want to do, though, is jump up to the left where you'll reach this platform over here. From here, you can jump onto this moving platform, and it will take you most of the way to the boss and allow you to collect a bunch of good stuff along the way, including some attack stars, a bunch of force power-ups, and a health sword. So make sure to grab those, and when you get to the other side, you'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint. Very convenient right before the boss. From here, you just need to watch out for the rollers and make your way to the right. Be careful jumping across this area. If you fall down to the bottom, you'll have to climb back up, and you may be better off just dying and respawning at the R2-D2 checkpoint. This is the boss, the attack carrier, and this one's not too difficult. There's an obvious red weak point in the middle of the bottom of the ship, and you just want to keep jump attacking that spot. Don't worry about the hover droids that it drops. If you kill those, it'll just spawn more of them. There's a shortcut we can do here with freeze jumps, so make sure your freeze force is equipped and get on top of the supply room on the right side. You'll need to do a freeze jump to get up here. Once you're on top, you want to jump once, and then press B and X at the same time to do a freeze jump, and then press B and X at the same time again to do a second one, and if you jump high enough, you'll be able to summon the platform that will carry you up here to the boss. So that's a pretty awesome shortcut, and it's not actually that difficult to do. Up above the forest moon, Lando and the rebel fleet emerge from hyperspace. We have got to give Han, Chewie, and Leia more time to destroy the shield generators. So buckle up for another Mode 7 vehicle segment. As far as the Mode 7 levels go, this one is fairly unique. You can rotate around 360 degrees, but you're actually fixed into one position in the middle of the screen and you're just controlling a targeting reticle for the guns. Pressing the Y button fires the guns, and X activates your shields. You have a limited amount of energy for the shields, and if you use them, they will prevent damage from the opposing TIE Fighters. 
you don't want to be reliant on the shields. Instead, whenever you see a TIE Fighter shoot one of their green energy balls, your first reaction should be to try to shoot that energy ball, which will counter it and prevent the damage without using shield energy. To move on here, we need to destroy a certain number of TIE Fighters, and you can see how many remain in the upper right corner of the screen. They usually spawn in waves in front of the Falcon, so if you stay at about this view, you should see them when they appear, but if you're not seeing any TIE Fighters, that probably means there's one behind you, and you should rotate around and look for it. So, once you've cleared them all, we'll be on to the next stage, where Han, Chewie, and Leia enter the shield generator on Endor through the secret entrance. I recommend Han for this level, but Chewbacca is also pretty good. I don't recommend this version of Leia. Han has his grenades and Chewbacca has the spin attack, while this version of Leia has... nothing. So she is a little bit faster than the other characters, I guess that's worth something. And there is a shortcut that you'll be able to do as Leia, but for now I recommend sticking with Han or Chewbacca. At the beginning of the stage we just have the standard blaster, which doesn't sound great, but it reflects off of the walls so we can do a bunch of trick shots with it by angling the shots around the room. Once you get down here though, you can break these glass blocks on the left side to find your first blaster power-up, which will give you the more powerful fire blaster. As the trap doors open up, make your way to the bottom of this shaft and then start heading to the left. When you see these large doors in the background, they'll open up and stormtroopers will come out. The stormtroopers will just keep spawning, but if you're low on health, you can farm them for small hearts and items. There is an instant death pit over here to the right, so you want to make sure to take out that gun before you drop down to pick up the big heart. And then as you break through these glass blocks on the right side, you'll find a blaster power up hidden within. So make sure to get that and then jump onto this platform which will carry you up to the next level. There are some flamethrowers mounted to the sides of this shaft. You can take those out with your guns and then head up here where you can remove a few more of those Gatling guns and then hit an R2-D2 checkpoint. You'll need to roll or slide to get under that wall and then you want to make a big jump up to here where you're going to find a bonus area. There's a few electrical turrets up here that you can take out with your guns, and in the upper left corner you'll find some coins, but that's not what we're actually interested in. Over to the right you're going to see some glass blocks up above, and when you shoot through them, there's a bunch of coins up there, but there are also three blaster power-ups and four extra lives. The extra lives are kinda hard to get because of all the glass blocks, You'll need to shoot through them in time to get the 1-ups before they disappear, so this isn't the most reliable place to get extra lives, but it's a great place to get blaster power-ups. Even if you died and had to respawn at that last R2-D2 checkpoint, you'll be able to power your blaster up to the rapid ion level here, and since we already had at least one blaster power-up before we got here, we'll be able to go all the way to the plasma cannon. So just work your way to the top, and remember there's going to be some one-ups up there, and as soon as you put them on the screen, the counter is going to start ticking for them to disappear. So the ones on the left side we might not be able to reach, but at least we got the two over here on the right, and we're going to head over to the left where you can find another blaster power-up, but we won't be able to power the blaster any more than it already is. The plasma is the highest level. There's going to be some difficult platforming ahead, but having enhanced blasters will make it a lot easier. So head over here to the right. You'll find another one of those doors where stormtroopers spawn, so if you need to farm them for hearts you can. And up here in a corner you'll find one of those speed up items. Unless you are very good with the speed up, you probably don't want it when you're navigating the platforms below. So just break through those glass blocks and come down here. You can stand on that small platform that mounted the turret, 
but it's a lot easier to get onto the moving platforms, so I recommend trying to stay with them, and these rectangular black platforms are also safe. Some of the larger platforms that aren't moving will drop out from under you when you jump on them, so be ready to stay moving when you see one of those. Over here, we need to jump up to the next rotating platform, and we're going to follow the arrows, which will lead us to an upper area. Make sure to take out any turrets that you see, just in case you need to use that center platform, and also because you don't want to get shot by them. Over here, we need to jump to that platform, and sometimes this one is just out of alignment. The best thing to do in that case is to just start jumping and land on that middle spot where the turret was, and you should be able to reach it from there. Do a double jump to get up to this next area, and in this part you have to press up in front of these doors to enter them, and they'll work like an elevator which will instantly move you up to the next area. This can be kind of confusing because this is the only place in the entire game where you need to press up to enter a door. So just blast your way through the enemies, making your way from elevator to elevator, and when you see those doors, press up in front of them to get to the next level. We're at the top now, so when we get to the other side, the next elevator is going to take us downwards. So clear out the enemies and then go way down, and then we're going to head over to the left. That guy dropped a shield, so that'll make this part a little bit easier. And over here, you need to drop off the left side, and there's a moving platform that you'll be able to land on. This takes us to yet another area with platforms rotating around turrets, so if you were hoping we were done with that, we're not. If you need to see below you, remember you can hold down the L button to look a little bit lower. You may need to do that around here, and you may actually need to see up above you sometimes, so the R button can be used for that. Just follow the arrows and you will get to the end. Jump onto this moving platform, which will take you up here. And then we're going to go up into another one of those elevators, which we can access by pressing up in front of the door. So clear out the enemies, grab any power-ups that they drop, and then press up in front of the door and head to the right. Make sure to hit this R2-D2 checkpoint, because as you make your way across this next hallway, a laser beam will blast through, and it can deal you big damage. You want to hide in the recesses at the bottom until the beam fires, and then come out for just a few seconds before hiding again. At the end, you'll find a big heart and a blaster power-up, and once you drop down below, you won't have to worry about that laser anymore. We can grab a shield's power-up on the right before we head back to the left and drop down this shaft, and at the bottom, you're going to find a whole bunch of good stuff, including two one-ups and multiple blaster power-ups. Just make sure you catch this platform at the bottom, which will bring you back to the top. There's going to be an R2-D2 over on the right, so if you grab that R2-D2 first, and then drop down and collect the two one-ups, you can drop off the bottom and die, making the one-ups respawn, and then you can collect them over and over and over again. The boss here is also very easy, so you won't need a fully powered up blaster to win. That's also the last easy infinite one-up trick in the game, so you'll want to take advantage of it to stock up on lives before the final few stages. Once you're done getting extra lives and power-ups, you want to blow up all the glass blocks and carefully take out the ones on the right before you jump across. If you miss this jump, you'll fall to your death. In the next room, we're going to fight the boss, the Shield Generator, and this guy is pretty easy. So as long as you don't fall off the bottom of the screen, you're going to be fine. The best strategy for this boss is to stay in the upper left corner, and if you have a fully powered up blaster, you can just start shooting at this guy. But if you don't, try using the grenades by pressing the A button as Han. Just throw a few of them at this boss and he will not last very long. There's a shortcut that we can do here as Leia. So choose Leia and from the first blaster power up, 
you want to head all the way to the bottom. So just keep falling down these trap doors, take out any enemies that are in your way, and when you get down here, you want to press up against this right wall, and as soon as that enemy launches a bomb, start sliding, and once the bomb hits you a couple times, you'll just go right through the wall. That will put you out over here near the first R2-D2 checkpoint, right by the bonus area. So that's a very useful shortcut. With the deflector shield destroyed, the Death Star is unprotected, but instead of switching to the fleet outside, we switch to Luke within the Death Star. This stage features a ton of enemies, which makes it look difficult, but it's also fairly straightforward, so at least you know what you have to do. Just keep jump attacking as you make your way to the right. You don't really have to stop and kill these enemies, just get past them. So just keep jumping and doing your double jump, and when you get far enough over to the right, you will have to do a bit of platforming here. These platforms that aren't moving will drop out from below you, and you want to just keep jumping and double jumping to get higher up. The ones that move do not drop out from underneath you, so you can take a short break whenever you get on one of those. You'll be able to find a lot of items on the sides as you climb up here, and if you miss a jump, don't despair, because as soon as you move off the screen, these falling platforms will respawn. So just try to fall onto any platform that you can, and start working your way back up. At the top of the shaft, you'll find an R2-D2 checkpoint, and then you just have to start working your way to the right again. So you're going to jump and double jump your way across this area, and you'll just slice your way across all of the enemies. Make sure to set your force power to heal in case you take some damage. At the end of the hallway is another one of those platform jumping sections, and you're going to be able to find some force power-ups and big hearts in the sides, so don't feel bad about using your force powers whenever you're trying to get through those long horizontal stretches. Whenever you get to the top of this one, there's a bonus area all the way up above, so make sure to jump up there and you'll find some extra big hearts, as well as another force orb and a one-up. In addition to all of that, there's another one of those speed-up power-ups, which will make it very easy to zip across to the left. Even if you fall down below, just keep making your way to the lower left side, and you'll take these platforms up to the top, although don't miss this bonus area up above, where you'll find another speed-up, two more hearts, a force orb, and an extra life. Drop down here and head over to the left where you'll reach the boss, and this is one of the easier bosses in the game. To defeat these guys, all you really need to do is crouch down and hold the A button to reflect their shots back at them. The one way that they can kill you is if their shots push you off the right ledge. You can fall to your death over there. So don't let that happen, stay on the left side, just keep reflecting their ion cannons, and these guys will easily be defeated. Once those droids are out of the way, we head back out into space, where Lando and the Falcon are going to need to remove some TIE Fighters from the surface of the Death Star. On Brave difficulty, we'll need to get rid of 20 TIEs, and the controls here are a little bit different. As usual, Y fires your gun, but B will make you go faster, and X will slow you down almost to a complete stop. So I like to slow down at the beginning here and just move up and down on the screen to avoid the TIE Fighter shots while I'm taking aim at them. The only time that you really need to speed up is to catch those hearts that they drop. So if you notice your health is getting low, you may need to start flying at top speed so that you can grab some of those hearts to replenish it. So just try to keep moving up and down to avoid the shots from the ties as you attack back. And if you notice that your health has dropped below 50%, try to fly into a cluster of big hearts. You should be able to get a lot of health back that way. Just one tie left. He's behind us now. And we did it. All right. Heading on to the next stage. In this scene, Luke comes face to face with the Emperor... But strangely after this, 
we don't fight the Emperor or Vader, we end up deeper within the Death Star. So I'm not sure what happens here. Does the Emperor, like, teleport us there? Well, in any case, our only choice here is Luke, and it's time to climb the tower. The tower really feels like the final stage of the game. After this, there's just Mode 7 vehicle segments and a few bosses to fight, so it's all downhill once we get to the top of the tower. The tower will test all of our Jedi skills. For the most part, we'll be doing a lot of jump attacks, but against these guns, you can hold down the A button to reflect the bullets back at them, or you can just slide past them, and you'll be able to escape without taking damage. Once you get over here, you just want to buzzsaw through these enemies, but don't miss the big heart next to the thermal detonator. And when you get over to the left side, you want to jump onto this platform, which will bring you up to the first R2-D2 checkpoint. Watch out for the Death Star troopers in the black suits, they shoot a devastating ray gun. And up here, you want to head over to the right, deflecting that gun's bullets. And on the far right side, you're going to find a 1-up. But first, if we jump up these platforms, we'll find a big heart and a health sword. So grab those and then head down to the lower right corner here. There's another big heart with that 1-up. With a 1-up in your possession, just navigate these small platforms up to the top. And up here, you'll find a few coins over on the right side, but the way you actually need to go is to the left. So avoid the ray guns, head over to the left. There will be some doors here that stormtroopers will come out of, and you'll find a nice stack of power-ups that includes a speed-up, a big heart, and some attack stars before you come down here to the next elevator, that will bring us to another level. These flying droids will try to shock you with electricity, so you want to get rid of them whenever you see them. And at the top of the elevator, we'll find another checkpoint, and then I recommend using the A button to block these guns and reflect their shots back at them, because there's going to be some more enemies that walk through there, making that slide method a little bit more difficult to do. If you head all the way over to the right, you won't find a 1-up this time, just a thermal detonator and a speed up. So just keep climbing from here. This area sort of mirrors the previous area, so you should know what to do. At the top, you'll find a big heart if you head over to the right side, and then you'll want to work your way back to the left. So grab that heart, and then just keep working your way back to the left, there's another one up here that you can get actually through the wall. So just jump against that wall and you should be able to collect it. And then keep hopping up these small platforms to get to the next area. Once again, there's another one of those flying droids. Make sure to get rid of those. And you can take out that gun through the wall. So that's a good way to deal with it. And then just head over here where you'll find a shields power up and we need to make our way to the right this time. More enemies will attack you here, and whenever you get to this elevator, remember where this elevator is, because once we get done with this stage, I'm going to show you a shortcut, and you're going to do it from right here. So hit that R2-D2 checkpoint, and then start making your way to the left. We're getting close to the end now. Up here you'll find another extra life and another one of those stormtrooper doors. So farm those stormtroopers for health if you need it, but you probably won't. Just get to this elevator and ride it up to the top. Just like all of the other elevators here, there's an R2-D2 at the top, so hit that checkpoint. But this is the end of the stage. You just want to keep heading over to the right, and we're going to come to the boss. Before we get there, there's one more stormtrooper door, so if you need to farm those troopers for health, you can. But once you get over here, you're about to get attacked by a hover droid, so you want to take out any other enemies that are in the way first. So here's the hover droid, and you don't want to go too far to the right, or you'll have to fight another enemy at the same time. We can defeat this one very easily just by crouching down and holding the A button, just as we did with the two in the previous stage. Once you get rid of this guy, and you head over to the right though, you'll fight the real boss, and the real boss is even easier than this guy. 
So this one shouldn't last much longer. You should keep your heal force equipped in case you need to replenish some health. You don't want to get killed by any of these guys. But this is the safe way to deal with that guy. As long as you're crouching and holding A, he won't be able to hurt you. And here's the boss, a purple elite guard. So just hit it a few times with the lightsaber and that's it. We've done it. We've completed the tower. Now I want to show you that shortcut. So from the last elevator on the right, you're going to jump to the right and you need to have your freeze force equipped as well as a full bar of force power. And that's what it looks like at full speed, but I'm going to explain it in slow motion. So you're jumping to the right and you're going to hold right and not let go of right the entire time. You'll do a double jump and when you're about halfway around, you press Y plus X to disrupt the double jump and then immediately press B to get a little boost. Wait for a moment so that you get some distance and then press B again to do your double jump. And you'll need to repeat this over and over again to get all the way to the right side. And if you do it correctly, you'll get the stage clear message and you'll be able to skip the boss as well as the end of the stage. After everything we've been through, this stage is an easy one. You're just going to head up to the right, block that gun with your saber by pressing A to reflect the bullets back into it, and when you get up to the top here, you have to fight a few enemies, and whenever you destroy those, we'll call them boxes in the foreground, they'll drop some items for you, including force power-ups, so keep your heal force active, and if you take any damage, just use it right away. Those red guards can hit you pretty hard, but you only have to take out two of them, and then you'll be able to proceed downwards. When you get to the bottom, there's going to be a door that Vader emerges from, but before we fight him, we want to head over to the right side where we'll find a few more power-ups. So just drop down here, and that's Vader's door, but you want to go by it for now, and don't head back to the left just yet. Up here we'll find a few more coins and a couple more of those boxes, and if you can just keep your force energy high, whenever we get to Vader, we can switch to the Vanish power and just go to town on this guy. It does not take much to defeat Vader, and after how difficult he was in the Empire Strikes Back, it feels like he just isn't trying that hard here. This stage is easy, but there is a shortcut you can do. Head to the right until this ball spawns and then walk back to the left and start sliding against the left side of the screen until you get hit and you'll suddenly wrap around to the right. Now you need to do a double jump over to the right to reach the platform or you'll fall off the bottom. And whenever Vader spawns, you'll notice that he's a little bit glitchy, like his lightsaber is not properly attached to his body. That might make him a little bit more difficult to defeat, but it doesn't actually matter. Just wail on this guy and he'll go down very quickly. So whether you take the shortcut or you go the regular way, this stage is pretty simple. Now that Darth Vader exploded, I just looked at the scoreboard and it looks like there's only one Dark Jedi left. Emperor Palpatine. Yes, it's time to finally face Darth Sidious himself. The Emperor seems to want Luke to kill him, and so he's going to get his wish. Choose Luke, and it's time for the battle with the final boss. The Emperor may be the most difficult boss in the game, but if you know how to fight him, he's not that bad. Equip your Force Heal, and you want to get right on top of the Emperor whenever he's standing on the ground. You'll be fairly safe here, and you can just rapidly attack him with your lightsaber. The Emperor is much more dangerous when he's flying around. He'll shoot some downward lightning bolts that will destroy the ground, and he can open up some pits in the floor, which if you fall into, are instant death. Definitely be extra careful when you're on the lower tier, and try not to fall straight through from the top either. The boxes that you'll find throughout the area contain those green orbs that restore your force power, so if you take some damage from the Emperor, use your healing force, and if you get low on force power, just crack open a few of those boxes to refill it. The Emperor may be tough, 
but if you have a few lives when you get here, you should be able to win. The Emperor dies with an explosion that's so small that it's almost comical. It's nothing compared to the massive release of energy that we see in the movie. And it seems that Darth Vader has recovered a bit from his explosion, and now he wants us to finally remove the mask. Now go, my son. Tell your sister you were right about me. With the Emperor out of the way, there's nothing left to do but detonate this Death Star. It's time to make our attack run. All we need to do as we fly through the narrow corridors here is survive. Some TIE Fighters will try to attack you. You can shoot them by pressing the Y button, and if you hold down the B button, you'll move faster. It may seem a little bit crazy to go faster through these corridors, but when we get to the next stage, we're going to have to hold down the B button the entire time, so you may want to get used to the speed now. If you need to rotate your ship, you can press the L and R buttons to do that. You won't have to do too much rotating here in this first stage, and even if you take damage, Whenever you destroy TIE Fighters, they'll drop items that will restore your shields and your health, so that makes this first section a whole lot easier than the next part. So just keep flying through, you don't have to take out any particular number of enemies, you just need to make it to the end of this corridor, and we'll be able to proceed. As long as you're not moving too much to the left and the right, you shouldn't hit the sides very often, and you'll just continue flying straight along. So feel free to go fast, and when you get about midway through this thing, you're going to have an opportunity to score a million points, so if you're interested in getting a high score, this is the easiest way to do it. You'll notice that we've been playing through the entire game, and we only have a score of 176,000 points. So to get to a million points by just fighting the standard enemies in the game, that would take close to forever. So this is going to be a very powerful trick if you're interested in getting a lot of points. It's going to be at the end of this long square-shaped hallway. That's where you'll find the very narrow formation that you need to fly through to get the million points. And you need to fly through it perfectly, so you have to use your L and R buttons to rotate your ship so that you can slip through there. It's tough to do, and most of the time you'll probably nick the sides and you won't get the million points. But if you're willing to put in a little bit of practice, that is by far the most effective way to get a high score in the entire game. When you see that million point bonus, it also means that we're about halfway to the end. So try to keep your health high by collecting the items that the TIE Fighters drop whenever you shoot them. And just stay on target. We'll make it to the end in no time. A lot of this tunnel looks the same, so it's difficult to tell how far you are into the tunnel. What you're looking for is an area with a lot of white supports that will signal that you're at the end. So we're getting close to there now, but we're not quite to it yet. Just keep shooting. If you pick up a thermal detonator, you can use that against the enemies, so remember that you press the X button to use those. Sometimes the enemies drop them here, which is just part of it. And we're heading through this corridor, and when we get through this part here, that should take us to the very last leg of this first Inside the Death Star run. So we'll just continue to fly through, and here it is. These are those white bars I was talking about, and this is the signal that we're at the end. So just stay alive through here and we'll have made it. But we're not done with the game just yet, because the next level after this one is by far the most difficult in the entire game. So get ready for that, I hope you have some lives left. And as soon as we emerge here, you can see that the TIE Fighters have stopped spawning. Here's a quick cutscene. Now we've got to hit the accelerators and escape quickly before the fire catches up with the Millennium Falcon. 
and that means you need to hold down the B button the entire time while you're flying through here. If you let go of the B button, well, the fire will catch up to you, and you will very quickly succumb to it. You need to use the L and the R buttons to rotate a bit here, but you'll be surprised. Sometimes you don't have to actually rotate at all. Like when you go into some of these square sections, a lot of times the Falcon may do some of the rotation on its own. The areas where you're going to take the most damage are these very long, narrow corridors, and we're in one right now. There's two of them, and you just need to move very subtly from the left and the right to avoid the walls. You don't want to make any big moves, or you'll definitely hit something. There are no enemies in here, and you might think that that's a good thing. No distractions. But no, it is actually a very, very bad thing, because any time you take damage in here, there's no way for you to recover it. Whenever you would kill the enemies before, they would drop recovery items, but there's nothing like that in this final run. We just took a beating there, and now we don't have any shields left, which means we're working into our actual health bar. This is not good, but we only have one more of those long sections to get through, and we're going to be coming to it soon. So do a few L or R turns to rotate through that area, and this is it, the second long corridor, and this one is longer and more narrow than the previous one. Remember, you're just making very small moves to the left and the right. You're holding down the B button so that you move fast enough to get away from the fire, and it seems like this hallway goes on forever. If you die, you'll have to start this entire escape sequence over again, so it's very easy to panic if you start taking damage in this last hallway, but if you can just get through it, you'll be completely in the clear. Once you get here, you can spin around, it'll be pretty hard to die at this point, and you'll finally emerge from the Death Star. And that's it! We've done it! We've beaten Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi! All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, the Death Star explodes, and down on the forest moon of Endor, the celebration begins. This game came out before the special edition of Star Wars, so the final cinematic that we see here is based on the original ending. We even get a 16-bit rendition of the Ewok Yub Yub song, which was removed from the later versions. I know that Ewok song is kinda goofy, but as far as I'm concerned, that's the proper end to Star Wars. We also see David Prowse as Anakin Skywalker, because this game came out way before the prequels. Remember, the Force will be with you. Always. But before we go to the credits, there's a few secret codes I'd like to show you. Just like in the previous games, there's a bunch of codes you can enter, and you want to wait until this start game menu fades in, and then press A, B, A, Y, A, X, and you'll hear that Ewok sound effect if you did it correctly. This code will give you seven continues instead of the usual three. But if 7 continues is not enough lives for you, you can also enter XXBAY. You'll hear the same sound effect. And if you did it correctly, you will have 99 lives to work with, so that will be pretty helpful. This next code needs to be done in a side-scrolling level. You just need to hold all of the face buttons, A, B, X, and Y, as well as down, and press start, and you'll come to this sound test menu. So you can try out the different music tracks and also sound effects. Now we'll go back to another one that you do on the opening screen. This one is just Y, 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 Y. So four Ys. And all it does is it allows you to manipulate this opening logo and text crawl by using the L and R buttons as well as the directional pad. It's kind of fun to manipulate the text crawl and make it go upside down or backwards. So you can see how that looks. 
and you can make it go faster or slower with the up and down buttons, but that's all that code does. A more useful one is BX, 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 B, 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 Y. This one will give you infinite thermal detonators. Just keep pressing X to use them. Infinite thermal detonators makes you feel very powerful as you blow up everything in sight. But if that's not making the stages easy enough for you, there's another code you can use to skip them entirely. This one has to be applied at the beginning like most of the others and it's Y-A-Y-A-B-X-B-X-B-X. If you did it correctly, once you're in the game, hold down the B button and press start and you will instantly clear the current stage. If you're in a side-scrolling stage, you'll get the normal stage clear message. So we're going to hold down B and press start and, well yeah, I guess we didn't want to play that one at all. The ultimate code is the debug mode, which is A-A-B-B-X-X-Y-Y-A-B-X-Y. And whenever you've entered this code, you'll know it worked right away because you can do the stage clear trick by pressing B plus start. So as soon as you start up, try that, and you'll see that it works. But if you plug in a second controller, there's a lot more you can do. You'll also be able to choose from any of the characters, including all of Leia's costumes. So if you want to use Wicket here in the Dune Sea, you can. You'll have infinite thermal detonators. And if you press L and R on controller 2, you'll access this debug menu. The debug menu will allow you to go to whichever stage you want to play. You can also go to different checkpoints within that stage, as well as adjust how many lives, health, which blaster you're using, all that sort of thing. But there is one more thing you can do with this code. Once you're in a side-scrolling stage, on controller 2, hold down A, B, X, and Y, and then press select to toggle on invincibility. You'll see a brief pause in the game when it works, and now you'll notice that your character doesn't take damage anymore. The last code, if you press A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, that will take you directly to the end credits. So if you'd like to skip the entire game and just see who made it, well, that's one way you can do it. And that is the final secret code of the game, and it also brings us to the end of the Super Star Wars series. As far as movie-to-game translations go, I'd say that this is the gold standard. It's too bad that they never made Super Star Wars games for any of the prequels or any of the later movies that were produced by Disney. I know that none of those are quite as good as the original trilogy, but as far as video games go, they could have been pretty cool. Even better, if somebody wanted to make Super Star Wars The Mandalorian and tell that story in this retro game style, I would probably pre-order that right away. Speaking of Mandalorians, or at least of characters that wear Mandalorian armor, this game has zero appearances of Boba Fett, and you'd think with a character as popular as Boba Fett, that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Instead of fighting that mace monster on top of Jabba's sail barge, that would have been a great chance to fight against Fett, and considering that they had already made a Boba Fett sprite for the previous game, I'm a little bit surprised that that's not what they did. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi, thus returning freedom to the galaxy. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because there will always be another evil empire threatening to conquer the universe, and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.